Welcome back to another Supercoach and Fantasy video with me, JD. Today, we are going through the five top tips to get better at Supercoach and or Fantasy this preseason. And I'm very happy to be joining you on camera. Unfortunately, my old webcam died as I was recording with the coaches panel. That episode will be out soon, no doubt. Uh, but yeah, it was very unfortunate uh, that uh, it died, like literally as we were prepping, uh, just went cactus. New one ordered arrived today, so we can do another video. And yeah, we're going to cover the top five tips I can give you for this preseason because, I mean, if you're watching videos at this point in the year, you're probably pretty serious about Supercoach and Fantasy in the sense that you get a lot of enjoyment out of it. You enjoy the preseason and in making good picks and having a good team and all that jazz. And so this video is really catered to you. These are the, the top things you can do to actually get better in the off season because I see a lot of people that are really engaged with it, but focusing on the wrong things at this time. Yes, I'm going to go over five things I think you should be focusing on, starting with number one, spending time on strategy, not players. And I think this is a really big one for a lot of people. At this time of the year, they jump in, they open their teams, they've got a team picker like this, uh, and they start focusing on those individual picks, going in on, uh, should I get Dago so young? Should I get... Bont, uh, is it worth paying for these top guys? Whatever it may be. And they start looking at them and analyzing them one by one. Is there a good pick or a bad pick? Rather than taking a step back and figuring out what are the big trends that are happening within the games, you know, being a student of the game, well, all that type of stuff, and actually learning about what, where good picks, where breakouts, where bad picks, all where they all come from, and actually having that good foundation. So as we get more information towards the end of the preseason, they're actually set up to make the right picks because they understand the strategy of the game, they understand how teams come together, and they're being built in a way that'll actually deliver them the results that they're after. Uh, so like a good example is, I want to say it was the Draft Doctors came out with a really cool insight on Twitter in the last week or two, um, uh, right about the same time that um, uh, Jaden Papowski came out with also some cool stuff on Twitter, and I'll go through both of them and, and I'll explain how it helps. So the Draft Doctors came out with a stat that I think that it was the last three or four overall number one fantasy mids from the competition had all come from a um, uh, the highest CBA mid of a top four stoppage team in the competition or the top four rock, rock hit out competition uh, uh, team in the league. So for example, last year, Bonham Pelly was the highest CBA attending mid at a top four stoppage team. I think dogs were either, I think there were two behind the crows. They were either one or two. And so this is really interesting, right? Like if you're looking at those types of stats, you can start figuring out, well, who could a top mid for next year be? What are the types of teams that could come from? You could even start looking at how reasonable is it for a team to move up the ladder from lower uh, stoppage count to a higher stoppage count. And so for example, Essendon is the lowest stoppage team last year, lowest ruck uh, hit out teams. And I think uh, North was the second least. So unless it's realistic for these teams to go from the bottom of the table to the top, it's probably not likely that an LDU or a Merit or a Parish is going to be M1 overall. And these things may seem obvious anyway, but understanding these types of things of where good picks come from and what they look like and understanding some of these fundamentals of the game are really crucial to then picking picks later on as we get more information. Uh, another example of this is Mora's Magic, who is, uh, if you don't know, uh, like, how could you not know? But he won fantasy in back-to-back -back years, uh, absolute one of the absolute goats, and then came across Supercoach in, like, top 10 in his first year. And I think last year had another top two or 300 performance as well. So just really good. And one of the things I've learned to appreciate about Selby is that he just understands the strategy of the game really well and really intuitively. So... Uh, for example, looking at how the early buys change things this year. And one of the things that took me a little while to stumble uh, across, but I got there, was that uh, when you have the early buys and you go from best 22 to best 18, guns and rookies actually get slightly better than what it has been in previous years where mid-pricer teams or value-based teams have been stronger and more competitive. And this was an insight that Selby picked up and put out in his first content as well. And those are the types of guys I love because they are actually understanding the strategy game. They're understanding how to construct teams that win and are, are using that uh, early on. So that's tip one, spend time on strategy, not players, especially early in the preseason. Get this really good fundamentals down. So then as we get more information as preseason goes on, you can overlay that on the good strategy and actually pick the right players to win this year. Secondly, and it ties into that one a little bit, is picking the right content. There is more content out there than ever when it comes to uh, Supercoach, Fantasy, whatever it may be. And 
I fall into this trap, or at least I have in the past, maybe before, maybe more before I started creating it myself, is I just used to like to listen to a lot of this stuff. If I'm going to the gym, if I'm going for a run, whatever it may be, I like listening to this type of content. So I'll put it on and listen to it and I listen to all types of stuff. And what I actually found was I had many down years uh, when I started listening to too much content and absorbing too much of this stuff. And I think the reason why is because you start taking in bad content inevitably as well. Not everyone that does this is as good as each other. It's probably a mean thing to say, but it's true. And I don't mean good from a production or entertainment side. There are lots of people that are very entertaining and fun to listen to, but aren't necessarily that great at the game. And that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Don't get me wrong. But if you're trying to get a lot better at the game this year, you probably want to reduce the content creators you're listening to, to just a handful of select ones that have really good performance and you do well listening to them. I have I've listened to good people before and have not been able to use their advice well myself. And so that's someone that I'll strike, out, strike off the list. I won't use them in future years. So, you know, there's lots of tips and tricks you can use to like figuring out who are good and bad content creators. Like, I mean, I do this sometimes, but if you go to absolutes, like I'll never start someone like, like, you know, there's red flags like this you can pick up. And if you can't tell that they're joking when they say that, or they're doing it for a bit, that becomes quite bad because if you're then absorbing that and using it, it's not good. And I think the, the biggest problem people fall into as well is that, um, say you get to the point where you've listened to like three or four good podcasts and you're stuck still on the fence between two players. Like, do I take Walsh or Tom Green? They've both got the early buy. They both could go bigger again. Who do I take? And then you chuck on the fifth podcast and it's the rubbish one of the bunch. Um, and they go one way or the other. That'll sway your decision. And it may not be the right decision. It'll just come down to whatever information you listen to last. And that'll be how you decide it. So, I know this is really hard because if you're watching videos at this time of the year, you're watching stuff at this time of the year, you're probably the type like me that's a super consumer of a lot of this content. But I would urge you to try and really rein in the content that you genuinely listen to for advice to just a handful. Um, I can give obviously some of the ones that I like um, and, and respect, um, but... I feel bad about doing it because I miss other people that are quite good. And I don't want you to think that listening to people that I don't listen to is not okay. There might be some really good people out there that you works really well with you that just hasn't worked for me. And I'm sure there are people that will listen to my advice and I've had really bad years off the back of it. And if that's the case, don't listen to me in future years or maybe just tune in and enjoy the video for entertainment value or whatever. But don't listen to my advice. If you if you find that you can't use it well, then I shouldn't be someone on your panel of experts that are that are giving you advice on on picking the best players, building the best team, using the best strategy. Um, all right. The third one, and it comes back a little bit to the last point I was making there, is to do your own research when in doubt. So as I mentioned, like say you've listened to three or four podcasts and you're down to still Walsh or Green and you're on the fence about these players, or maybe you're looking at whether you should pick Bont or not, or um, Dacos or not, and you're on the fence about this player, please, please, please do your own research when in doubt. I think one of the worst things you can do is just blindly listen to people and make selections based off that, especially if it goes against your intuition or what you're originally thinking anyway. And the reason why I say this is it's a trap that we can all fall into. We all have our own biases about players that we'd like to see succeed or break out or we believe in. And inevitably what happens is content creators can fall into confirmation bias. We'll start looking for data or facts that support the player that we want succeeding. And don't get me wrong, people that do their counter research also can fall into the same trick. You start finding, looking for what you want to see rather than reflecting reality. And so when you get into these situations where you're unsure or someone's, you know, really pushing hard a narrative counter to what what you're looking at, please go and do your own research. There's nothing more valuable than that. And actually going and looking at the data and the stats yourself and figuring out, are they just trying to push me a story because they want to believe it or is it actually the case? So number three, do your own research when in doubt. Now, obviously don't do all the research. You, you're not going to be able to, you burn out, right? That's why we've got content creators because they can do go and do all that stuff, distill it into something useful for you. But when in doubt, make sure that those that is when you're actually you know putting the time into research those players that you really care about. The fourth one on this list is to find a good group of people to discuss your ideas with in Supercoach and Fantasy. I cannot tell you how much it improved when I started finding, you know, forums or other people to bounce ideas with and go back and forth and really collate that. I mean, if they're listening to three or four good good podcasts, you're doing the same, someone else's as well, then all of a sudden you've got all these different resource, resources and ideas coming into this melting pot and being able to use to debate them off against each other to get to really good decisions. So for me, one of the things that 
helped get me a lot better was uh, when I joined the Fantasy Take TV Discord, which I will try and put a link into that uh, below for those that want to join that haven't. But there are lots of other people that, you know, originally it was on forums. So it was like Supercoach Scores and Big Footy, which are both probably the games probably gone past them a little bit, but still really good resources in their own rights with lots of good players. Um, Discords are obviously quite popular now. There's a few of those out there. And I still see lots of people that have like Twitter groups or, or chat groups, whatever they bounce ideas off. So try and find your way into a group of good people to discuss ideas. The one caveat I'll put with that, and I definitely see it in our own Discord at times, is the best coaches aren't always the most talkative uh, or aren't always serious. You know, sometimes we're online, a little bit of trolling goes on. But you, you can definitely get people that um, have a very outsized voice, but don't necessarily have the best finishes. So once again, before just blindly listening to advice, a bit like podcasts, actually check out the background. How good are they? What are their finishes been like? How seriously should you be taking their advice? Um, are they actually be able to back it up with stats and facts and figures and all that type of stuff? Or are they just throwing stuff out there like wild stuff um, because they're just an outlandish individual? We've got our fair share of those. So find a good group of people to discuss ideas with. Uh, I'll chuck the link for the Fantasy Take TV Discord below for those that... Um, want to scope that out, but you might find there are, you know, group of friends that you've got that actually work much better for you. And that's totally cool too. And then the fifth tip for this preseason is to plan to watch all four round zero games in detail. I already mentioned this in previous videos as well, but this is the first year, at least the first I can remember, where we are getting a free look at players in their actual best 22s plus subs, uh, in their actual roles in real AFL games. There, there are you know, if that's the only preseason research you did, that would probably be the most valuable one uh, because it's you're not guessing off preseason training reports. You're not guessing off preseason practice matches. You're getting the real deal. Uh, and you're actually able to use your eyes, do the eye test, actually figure out who you like, who you don't like, what was their role like, all that type of stuff. Uh, so if you are someone that normally skips these types of games and just looks at data afterwards or listen to other people's advice, I think there's a chance that you get caught out. Uh, so yeah, please do your own research and actually watch these four round zero games, prioritize watching them. If you could only watch four games this year, it would be those four. They're going to be the most important for defining our teams. And that'll be my five tips. So just to recap one, spend time at least at this part of the year, considering strategy, not players over invest on that compared to what you might've in previous years. Secondly, pick the right content and right content creators to listen to, make sure they work for you. Don't go too wide and expansive. Pick just two or three that you really like that are really high quality and use those to make your decisions. Thirdly, do your own research when you're in doubt. Uh, people can confirmation their bias confirmation bias away into anything. So make sure you're doing your own research and backing those 50-50 calls in on your own. Fourth, find a good group of people to discuss ideas with, bounce, trades, suggestions, captains, vice captains, starting picks, all that off. And then lastly, make sure you're watching those round zero games, prioritize them over everything else. All right. Thanks for joining me for this video. I hope you found the tips useful. If you've got a tip below that didn't make my top five, please add it below and I'll see you in the next one. Hopefully the new webcam was good. Let me know. Peace.